Okay, this is a video for lesson 4.7 part 2. Um, so if you haven't watched 4.7 part 1 yet, I recommend you do that. I also recommend you try if the first, let's say, four or so, four or five um, questions from the assignment before watching this video as well. Um, okay, so we're going to do two more examples here. Um, that cover two more scenarios that just require a little bit of extra instruction before you guys try questions like these. Um, the first one is going to be how to minimize distance on the coordinate plane. And the second is going to be a, an economics um, example or a business application. Okay, so uh, we're doing example three here in 4.7. Um, We've got a curve, or it's not a curve, it's a straight line drawn here. And it says we want to minimize, or we want to find the point that's closest to the origin. So I'm just going to draw a few things on our graph. Remember the origin is the point zero, zero. Um, in this case, a lot has already been done for us. So remember those seven steps we talked about in, in the part one of the lesson? Um, step one is done. We've defined our variables, x and y, OK? Uh, Step two is also done. We have an equation that relates X and Y together. So step one is already done. Step two is done. Um, we need to work on step three, which is writing an equation that minimize, or for the quantity we want to minimize. In this case, is that is distance. Okay, so we want to minimize distance. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to draw some things in our picture, on our diagram here. I'll pick green to draw in. So let's say we have a, we want to find the point on the curve. I'm just going to pick a random point that I think might be closest. I'm not sure. Maybe it's this point here in green. Um, in order to minimize this, or in order to find the distance between the red point and the green point, I need to um, draw a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so this little trick works for any two points on a graph. In order for, to find the distance between them, you just draw a nice right triangle um, connecting those two points. So this is the distance we want to minimize here. Okay, but you can find that length. So I'll call that, well, I'll leave it for now. Um, we can find that length by using X and Y. So this point is going to be labeled X comma Y. Okay, so this length here, is x, right? That's the um, x value of that point. And this length here is y. So this would be x, oops, sorry, use q instead. Uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared using Pythagoras. Okay, so that's what we wanted to minimize. Um, now here's a little trick that we're gonna use in this question is that if you're trying to minimize uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared, you would get the same answer as if you were to minimize x squared plus y squared, the square of that. Um, the answer would turn out to be the same either way. Uh, but it's much, much easier to take the derivative uh, without the square root. So we're going to do this little trick and just minimize q. Okay. Um, so we want to minimize the squared distance. It's going to give you the same answer as minimizing just the distance. Okay, um, so now we're on step four, which is substituting what we know about our two, two variables in order to write Q just in terms of X only. So Q equals X squared plus, so I'll have 2X minus 5 all squared. Okay, great. Um, and now I'm just going to take the derivative to find my critical numbers. I don't have any endpoints here, so the only critical numbers are going to come from the derivative. So we need to use the chain rule in the second part. So the 2 is going to come down. Oops. 2x minus 5, and then the power of 1, and then times the derivative of the inner function, which is just 2. We'll rewrite that much nicer. 2x. So I'll expand this out. Um, so I'll multiply these both in. Um, so I'll have 2 times 2x times 2. So it'll be 8x. 
And then 2 times negative 5 times 2, which is uh, negative 20. And I can combine some like terms here. So I have 10x minus 20. That's a nice simple function. Great. So now this is defined everywhere. So the only critical number is going to um, occur where um, this derivative is 0. So I'll set it equal to 0. And I'll move uh, the x term to uh, one side and isolate it, divide both sides by 10. So my critical number is at x equals 2. So that would be um, a possible place where uh, we would have a minimum value for the distance. Uh, we need to do the first derivative test now because right, we're not sure if that's the actual answer or not, so we just need to confirm. So I'm going to look at x values less than 2, x equals 2, and x greater than 2, and I'll look at my quantity derivative, so which was 10x minus 20. So if you plug in a number less than 2, let's say 0, 10 times 0 minus 20, that is a negative number. So the function q is going down in this region. The derivative was 0 at 2. And if you plug in something greater than 2, you'll get a positive number. So it turns out this is a down and then up, so minimum. Great, so that's what I wanted to find. Awesome. So I found the minimum point. Um, we just need to find the other variable now. So we need to find y. Uh, so x equals 2. And we have, were given in this equation that y equals 2x minus 5. So we sub in what we know, 2 times 2 minus 5, so you get negative 1. So the point on the line um, that is closest to, there we go, the origin is uh, 2 comma negative 1. And we're just going to go up to our picture here and confirm that that actually makes sense. So here's the actual answer. I'm just going to use a new color. Maybe I'll use yellow. There's the actual answer there, 2 negative 1. And that kind of makes sense. That looks like it might be the closest point on the curve to um, the origin. So great. So the point on the line that's closest to the origin is 2 comma negative 1. Um, just to reiterate here, we minimize the squared distance instead of minimizing the square root uh, or the actual distance, um, just because it really reduced um, the complexity of the derivative when we're finding the critical numbers. So that's a good trick. Anytime you minimize distance and you're using the Pythagorean theorem, don't put the square root over or you can get the same answer by minimizing the squared distance. Okay. Last application here I want to do is this business application. I really like this example. So I'm going to star it. There's a couple in this assignment as well that are similar to this. I like it because it's kind of realistic. Okay. So um, we have to define a few things here before we do the question. So I'll just highlight as I read through. So let's consider some marketing. So um, we're going to define a certain function here that we're going to call P. So P of X is going to be the price. So it's going to be a special function that a company could um, figure out for themselves. The price per unit the company can charge if it sells X units. So if a company wants to sell, let's say, 200 iPads next month, then P of X would tell you what price the pump company should sell them at. Okay. Um, this is called the demand function or P for pr price function. Um, that's why they called it P of X for price. And um, it should be a decreasing function of X. Yeah. So if you want to sell more units, then you should price your things lower. Right. Um, so uh, and then the revenue. I'm just going to write down in red here. Revenue. Oops. Yeah, no revenue equals money. In. So revenue is defined as all the money a company makes or comes into the company. Um, so the money that you make for selling X units would be however many you sell times the price you sell them at. 
So in this case, x times p of x, the number you sell times the price. That makes sense? Okay, so that's called the revenue function. And often companies want to maximize the revenue. They want to make as much money as possible. Um, and so when you take the derivative of the revenue, it's called the marginal revenue. Um, we won't really need to know that, but um, companies often want to maximize their revenue. Obviously, right? You want to make as much money as possible um, with your company. Okay, um, so here's the example. A store has been selling 200 iPads a week at $350 each. Okay, a market survey indicates that for each $10 rebate, so a rebate is like money back that the customers get. So when they take $10 off the price, the number of units sold will increase by 20 per week. Find the demand function and the revenue function. How much, how large a rebate should the store offer to maximize the revenue? So remember the rebate's like a coupon. It's like money off, okay. Um, so let's go through this slowly. So uh, in this case here, they're basically telling us with this constant $10 off means the iPads increase by 20 per week. They're saying that this is gonna be a linear function. Um, because it has a constant rate of change. So the demand function or the price function is linear. Okay, so it's a straight line. Um, and they give us a point on that curve. They say, if I wanna sell, so point given, 200 iPads, then I better sell them at $350 each. Okay. They also give us the slope of the linear function too. They say that if I decrease the price, sorry, my light turned off. Good. Turn it back on. There we go. If I want to, if I decrease the price by ten dollars, if I give customers a ten dollar coupon, so if I make y decrease by ten dollars, the price decrease by ten dollars, I'm going to get twenty more customers. So that's change in y, right, over change in x. So that's like negative one half. Okay, so I've got the point, I've got a slope on my curve. So I'm going to be um, making um, a relationship or I'll be making the price function now, I guess. Um, and this is like step two in um, the optimization problem. So step one is defining the variables which are already defined for us. The price function is already like defining the variables. So we're doing step two right now. We're writing it in the price function. So P of X would be, well, actually, we'll use point slope form. So P of X minus 3,500, or sorry, 350 equals negative half X minus 200. I'm gonna rearrange this and write this in slope intercept form, just so it'll be easier um, when we write the revenue function. So I'm gonna add, 350 to both sides. I'm also going to expand this. So P of X equals, so I'll get negative half X, negative half times negative 200 is plus 100, uh, plus 350. Therefore P of X is negative half X plus 450. Okay, so that is our price function. So step two is done. We've got um, what price we should set these iPads at if we want to sell a certain amount. I don't want to maximize or minimize this. I want to maximize the revenue. So revenue is how many units you sell, how many iPads we sell times the price we sell them at. So revenue. Actually, I'll write. So before we were using Q for the quantity we want to maximize or minimize, here we're going to use, um, we're going to label it R for revenue. Um, so revenue equals number of units sold times price. Right? So for us, 
R of X would be the number of units sold is X and the price we sell them at is P of X. We've already defined what P of X is. So we're going to plug that into there. And so we only have one variable. So X times negative a half X plus 450. Okay, awesome. And revenue is what we want to maximize. Companies want to maximize the amount of money coming in. Before I take the derivative and find the critical numbers, I'm just going to expand it so I don't have to use the product rule. So negative half X squared plus 450 X. So now I want to find my critical numbers. Um, we don't have any endpoints. So I'm just looking for the derivative. Uh, the, half, the two comes down, cancels with the half, so I'll get negative X and plus 450. Oh, great, this is super easy to solve. So this is defined everywhere. So the only critical number is gonna happen where that revenue function derivative is zero. Basically just move that X to the other side and you've got your answer. Okay, so X should be 450. Um, we have to do a quick derivative test to make sure that this is the minimum. So I'll look at values less than 450 equals 450 greater than 450 r prime of x. So again, we're using r instead of q, but that's, it's everything's still the same. So if you plug in a number less than 450, you're going to get something that is positive and negative. So r of x, so revenue would be increasing and then decreasing in this area. So this is a maximum point. Great, because we want a maximum point. Okay, so let's just review what we've got so far. We wrote our price function down. That's not what we wanted to minimize. That just relates the price and the amount sold together. Um, what we want to maximize is the revenue. So that's like our Q in this question. So we wrote our revenue function down. We found our critical numbers, uh, or just one critical number, 450. And we found that it is a maximum. Okay. Awesome. What is this question actually asking for? It says, find how large a rebate, what kind of coupon should the store give to maximize the revenue? So X is the number of units sold, remember. So we, we found out that to maximize the revenue, the company should sell 450 units. Let's figure out the price they should actually sell them at then. P of 450 equals our price function was negative a half x plus 450 equals negative a half times 450 plus 450 equals 225. Let me just check with my, yep, 225. Okay, so the company should set the price at 225. Um, that's not even the answer though. The answer is asking what kind of rebate should the store offer? So remember the original price was 350. So 225 is $125 less than that. So they should offer a coupon for $125 off of the original price. Okay, so the price that maximizes the revenue is 225. Um, so the company should offer a rebate of $125. Offer a rebate. Of, remember, rebate's like a coupon. Rebate of $125 to maximize revenue. Okay. All right. Good. So you might need a few more practices at those, um, just with all of those definitions. But again, it's those same seven steps, except we're not using the same variables like Q and X and Y. Um, we introduced that price function and the revenue function instead. Um, but the process is the same. You're still finding critical numbers, doing your first derivative test. Okay, that is it for optimization.